So I just checked the satellite weather and it looks like there's a really big storm rolling in tonight. Lots of snow right up in the mountains, which are about 1,500 feet above me. So I'm gonna climb up there and see what kind of views I can get and see if I can catch these storms rolling up the valleys and hitting up in the peaks. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna get my stuff packed up there and it's about a five mile hike to get up. So it shouldn't take me too long. So I'm tucked way down on this ridge line out of the wind and still keeps kicking up pretty good. But I'm trying to shoot Mount Rainier. See it right back there in the distance. So I'm zoomed in at 200 millimeters, which allows me to see, take this histogram off so you can see, everything leading up to Mount Rainier plus the top of the mountain. So what I'm banking on is all these clouds up top here getting light. So the sun sets over in this area, hoping to get side light right in front of the mountain. And that'll give me some diffuse light and separation between all these foreground ridge lines. So if the light comes across there and breaks those up, it should add some really nice depth and color to the scene. I'm going to take my focal point I'm just going to put it right down on one of these mounds about midway in. Zoom in at 100% and see if I can grab a focal point here. I use back button focus. If that doesn't get it, I can dial it in just using the focal ring up here with my finger. And that's the main advantage, along with many other, of using back button focus. You guys can check out my video on back button focusing. All right, so now I have a focal point right there, single point spot focus. I'm going to shoot at pretty high, so let's look at the histogram. Histogram looks good, exposed to the right, and ISO 320 is going to kick me out 1 60th of a second shutter speed at f over 8. So I'll give that a try first. I'm trying to time this when the wind's not kicking too hard, but oh, that actually looks pretty good. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it's sharp there. Make sure it's sharp all the way back to the mountain. Eh, hard to tell. I'm going to crank the ISO a bit more, drop the exposure down a little bit. Gives me a 200th of a second. First, I wanted to show you guys how the shutter speed can really affect your image sharpness, especially if there's harsh wind. So we can look at three different images here. You can see this first image is ISO 160, and that gives me one over 25th of a second shutter speed. And you can kind of see down here, it's a little bit blurry, especially across the ridge lines here, especially compared to these other two instances. Same exact composition for these, but this was at ISO 320 and 160th of a second shutter speed. So if you look at this one, it's starting to get a little bit sharper here. And if you compare it to this one, you can definitely see. So this is the ISO 160, 125th. Then this is the ISO 320, 160th. Now the last one is even sharper. I shot this at ISO 800, one over 200th of a second. So the fastest shutter speed and the sharpest image by far. But you can see there's a little bit of noise starting to come into this image. So I can compare and contrast these two. And you can see that the ISO 320, 160th of a second looks sharp compared to the first shot. But when you compare it to this one, this one is much, much sharper. If I zoom back out on these, you can see there's not a whole lot of image degradation due to noise, even on the ISO 800 shot for this specific camera. So now I've opened this image up in Photoshop, and I want to show you guys a really cool tip that you can use anytime you're shooting sunrise or sunset. Now this isn't one of my favorite images. I'm not actually going to put this in my portfolio, but you can use this anytime you're shooting sunrise or sunset. So a really easy thing to first do is identify what your color harmony is within the image. And color harmony is just two colors or more that lie across from each other on the color wheel. So I'm going to open my color module here, and you can find it up here under window and color if you don't have it yet. And first I'm just going to select what is known as the key color. Now the key color is just the dominant or main color in the image. It can be anything you select, so don't worry about it too much. But I'm just going to select the color picker or eyedropper tool here, and I'm going to select the key color. I think it's gonna be blue for this one, but it could also be orange or yellow. So now I have this color showing up over here. So a color harmony is just a color that lies across from this key color. So for this image, it would be yellow or orange. Something right in here would work well. So I would like to complement both of those colors within this image. I would like to increase the blue 
and increase the yellow or orange. Now, a really easy way to do this, since we already have blue down here in this image, is just to add some yellow or orange light coming in the side and lighting up the peak. So what I'll do here is I'll just click the color balance tool right here. So under adjustments, I'll go to color balance. And there's many different ways you can do this, but this is one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to come up here to tone. And I would like to select highlights. And then I'm going to bring up the red a little bit and the yellow a little bit. And that's going to produce an orangish yellow color right here near the mountain. Now I can come down here to this mask and hide it or invert it. And then I can just grab my masking tool or my brush tool right here. And I'll grab a white brush. And I'm just going to paint this in like sunlight coming into the scene. I'll go with a pretty low opacity, say around 40. And then I'm just going to paint this color across into the mountain. So right here. I'm not going to paint it up in the sky or anywhere else. This is just to simulate what the sun would do if it was coming in the side here. So I try to visualize where the sun is. It's out here somewhere because it's lighting up this whole area and the sun's setting over here. So I just drag this brush into the scene from that direction. And then you can see it adds some of that complementary color that we had defined right here in the final image. So there's some really cool looking clouds right up above Mount Rainier and the horizontal wasn't including those. So I set up a vertical composition. The mountain in the very bottom and all those layered hills, but then it goes up into those really wild looking clouds. Just a standard exposure. Exposed pretty dark to keep the shutter speed fast. Let's see how it looks. Oh man, I really like that one. This is an unexpected potential favorite shot of the trip. Wow, those clouds look so cool up there. See all the light back that way is dead now. And this is almost gone. I'm gonna take a few more as those clouds change. I like to compare and contrast all the different ways that they can form over say 15 or 20 minutes. And then I can blend them together as I've showed you guys before take one more. So one of the other things I really like to do whenever I'm shooting landscapes and there's lots of different cloud formations in the sky and they're moving quickly because of high wind is to set my composition up, determine that I really like the composition and then leave it in place. And as the clouds move, I'll take new shots. So here I have the first shot. Here I have the second shot and here I have the third shot. Now I took a bunch of these as well that I don't have on the screen and they weren't as good, but this gives you basically five to 10 different shots and different ways that the cloud looks within the image. So you can blend your shots together and you can have your base or bottom of the scene that stays the same. Maybe the lighting would change, but the clouds are gonna change over it. And then you can blend these together and get a really good overall effect in your final image. So you get the best circumstances of the lighting in the foreground, and then you get the best circumstances of the clouds up in the sky. And this is a way to ensure that you always get a really good shot of the composition you like, because usually when I'm comparing and contrasting these different cloud scenes, one that I didn't like in the field because I'm looking at the back of this small LCD screen, I'll actually end up liking at home. So generally this helps me out a whole lot when really dialing in my final image. That shoot actually went way better than I thought it was going to. I think I got at least one shot in there I like, maybe two. But I am headed back down right now, at least part of the way, into that new river valley. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna camp tonight or what I'm gonna do. I wanted to hike for a little bit longer. So nice out and should have a little bit of moonlight to hike here in a little bit. It's only 6.45, so spend a little bit of time on the trail and then find camp somewhere. But I think that is a wrap for today's video. So thanks for watching, guys. I always appreciate it. I'll see you next time. I wanted to give you guys a quick heads up. Right now, if you join my email list, I have a 10-day free trial, which gives you unlimited access to all of my photography courses. Now, these courses teach every single technique that I use as a full-time wilderness photographer. So you'll learn camera technique, you'll learn photo editing, photo organization, composition, how to find shots in the field. You'll be able to access and watch dozens of my expeditions out into the wilderness where I take these photos and teach you how to create them from start to finish. I designed this school to be the perfect learning experience, something that I wish would have existed when I started wilderness photography, landscape photography, and outdoor photography 10 years ago. 
So if you'd like to join my email list, you'll get this 10-day free trial. You'll also get a bunch of other good stuff, including access to my PDF library, which includes all of my photography guides, which you can take out in the field to shoot with you. Check out the link down below this video to join and sign up. You can cancel anytime. I'll never hold your email address hostage. I want to provide you with the best learning experience possible.